What we're going to do is have a conversation about high school writing, the way that Brave Writer thinks about it, the way we've designed it. Kirsten is going to take us on a tour of three brand new writing classes. We are so totally excited about them. And then at the end, when this is all over and you've all gone back to hanging out with your kiddos, I'm going to take the list of attendees, those of you who showed up today on this broadcast, and draw one name, and you will get to enroll one of your kids in whichever writing class you want starting in the spring. So we will give you a special code so that you can get that. Uh, yes, so we're very thrilled to have you come live. That really means a lot to us. It helps us have that good energy for our webinar and to answer questions. Hello, everyone. My greetings come from Maryland, where it's a little bit colder than I would like, but hey, it's going to take it. <laughs> I know. It's been bitterly cold already in Cincinnati. I'm not a fan. So to get started, I thought I would give you just a quick overview of how I understand high school writing, the project of high school writing for college preparation. And then we will launch into the specific material of these three classes, okay? So the overview that I want you to take away is this. High school writing preparation in, uh, uh, for college is all about mastering the expository format, being able to use research and data to support the points that you make. Whether you are writing an exploratory essay, where all you're doing is comparing and contrasting ideas without drawing a conclusion, or you're writing a persuasive essay, a thesis-based essay where you are arguing for a specific point of view and you are proving it using points and particulars. That kind of writing is foreign to a seventh grader and an eighth grader. They know how to do report writing. They can write a report, you know, about the Lincoln Memorial or your city, you know, uh, council. They can write a report, but a report doesn't take a point of view. A report narrates data almost like an encyclopedia. What we want in the high school level and to prepare for college is helping our kids manage and juggle the variety of viewpoints that are a part of any field that they will write about. But here's the catch. We ask them to do it with a blindfold. Like they've never read essays. And then we say, hey, write an essay. The most common teacher comment in school around essay writing is this. They start the year, they assign an essay, a student says, I don't know how, and the teacher says, you should have learned that last year. <laughs> they pass the buck backward every year. And no one ever takes the time to have them read essays, to teach them the kind of thinking they need to write the essays, nor do they walk through the format in a deliberate, patient way. In Brave Writer, we aim to do all of those. Now, up until this point, the way we've done it is we've used a class that I called Kids Write Intermediate. It was the second class that I ever created in Brave Writer. The purpose of that class was to introduce the kind of rhetorical imagination and critical thinking needed to write a powerful essay. I also tossed in there the ability to paraphrase. We talked a little bit about viewpoint and sources, but it was centrally focused on the power of language, comparing viewpoints in your mind, understanding where your viewpoint comes from and why you're attached to it before you can shed it to be dispassionate. And it did all of those things well. But what my instructors, especially Kirsten, have been telling me for the last several years is it's too much for one class. We have so much to cover and so much we want to do to help our students be prepared. Couldn't we do this more effectively if we put these skills in separate groups? Not only that, I have been saying for years our students should read essays, and then we never did it. So finally, Kirsten and the team, you know, accosted me and said, this must happen. And I said, Uncle, okay, you put it together. I'll take a look and let's see how it turned out. Well, I am now ready to turn this over to Kirsten, who's going to tell you how we took that critique of my work and transformed it into something even better. Take it away, Kirsten. 
Thank you, Julie. I am so excited, you guys. I've been looking forward to this reveal for a month now because I am just so pleased as punch to introduce these classes to you. As a parent of a teen who's had to go through the writing process, I just know in the depths of my heart that this is going to empower you and your kids in writing in so many ways. So I'm going to share each class with you. Please remember to write in your questions as you have them. We'll try to answer them. And um, I'm going to keep in mind that some of you may have taken Kids Write Intermediate. That may be a class that you've already been through and you may be curious about where to go from here. So we'll talk about that too, okay? I'm gonna do a little bit of sharing of my screen and jumping back just to give you a chance to see some of the information and maybe take a screenshot if you wanna capture it. Everything I am saying is up on a blog post that I'm gonna show you a link for, so you can find a lot of it there too. So don't feel like you need to screen capture unless you really want to, but I just wanna give everybody a chance to see it. Okay, here we go. Okay, so this is our new series of essay prep classes. We call them essay prep, obviously, because they prep for the writing of the essay. They are college prep classes for teens. We recommend these classes for ages 13 and up. They're going to lay a great foundation for any academic writing that your kids are going to do. So if they haven't had any essay experience at all, it's a great place to start. If they've only had a little and they need some extra depth, this is going to give them some great classes as well. So it's really going to work well. Our first one is the reading of the essay. We're going to read essays, everyone. Who's excited and who's pumped? I am. Woo um, all right, so Virginia <laughs> Woolf says there's no room for the impurities of literature in an essay, and it's true. Essays pack a punch. They are really an, an amazing energy-filled experience when done well. So we want kids to see that. So in this, we're going to have it as kind of a literary uh, analysis class. This is a good introduction to how to look at pieces of writing, react to them, engage with other students about what you see, and then to imitate some of the models that the kids are going to find in there in their own writing. So they're going to learn how to write really strong, impactful statements just as these essay writers do. They won't do full essays. This is the reading of the essay, the analysis of what makes it work, and then using some of those techniques in short, engaging writing assignments, okay? So the reading part involves four essays, one for each week, although we couldn't resist giving a little bit of extra reading for those who were interested. So you'll get a chance to kind of get a wide variety of authors, a wide variety of cultures if you read them all, but you only have to do four for the class, one for each week. We're gonna consider each author and look at the literary elements they use. It may be talking about audience, their writer's voice, pulling out the theme, voice and detail, and engaging with other students over those ideas. Um, and then we're gonna look at writing from multiple perspectives too. So I'm gonna pop out of that screen so you can see my face a little bit as I kind of explain that. Take a screenshot if you want. Um, so those are the, the basic ideas of what's going to happen in the class. It's a reading class and a writing class and mostly an engagement with other students class. We have a student to student assignment each week where they're going to respond to what somebody else said and give their own personal spin on it. And then in the writing, as I was saying, that we in all of these classes are really focused on looking at multiple perspectives. So we have one gentleman, for example, who writes about uh, what it's like to, the first time he discovered that his, the color of his skin had an impact on somebody else and he was walking late at night and somebody got afraid. And that was a new experience for him. We're going to look at that experience and turn that lens then on our own experience to see what are some of the things that have happened to me that I may be able to get a new perspective on now that I've learned a little bit about what happened to this gentleman. So that kind of thing we're gonna really get into in all of the weeks. But we're also going to look at the different kinds of essays, and the persuasive essay, and the informative essay, and the narrative essay. And then we're going to have writing activities for each one. We have a lot of essay lovers on our staff, so it was such a tough, tough choice to pick the right one. But we, we got a book that we really love. The Little Norton Reader has some great essays in it. We're going to pull from those, so we highly recommend you use that book for the class. And then this is going to be your chance to get kids turned on to just the idea that essays are cool. Are you excited, Julie? I'm so excited, especially because I love that book so much. I think one of the things that we don't realize when we're talking about the essay, most of us only know it in the form of what we did in school, and we don't realize what a powerful literary tool it is in general. It shows up in magazines, it shows up in newspapers, it shows up just as a literary form of its own, and it becomes this really 
wonderful partner in reflection if you can engage it. The word essay in French, essayer, it just means to try. It's an attempt. And so if we start thinking about essays as an attempt at disclosing a thought or taking a perspective or examining one small piece of a larger picture, we can take some of that stigma off of it being so hard, so serious, so necessary uh, to follow these accurate standards. So yes, the name of the book is The Norton Little Reader. Um, we, we will put the uh, link for that in the class description, and then you can just go order it off Amazon. All right. I know. It's exciting. This whole idea of the studying the essay is so new to me. It's not something I ever did in school, you know, and yet we expect our kids to write so many of them. I mean, it really is the predominant writing that they are going to do in mm -hmm. high school, in college, and yet they have no exposure to right. what makes them worthwhile. So we're going we're gonna to solve that this next awesome. year. All right, so our next class we're going to talk about is the one that's the closest to Kids Write Intermediate. Uh, so if you have taken that class, a lot of these are going to seem familiar, so you probably would not take this particular class. Uh, this class is a, called Dynamic Thinking, Essay Prep Dynamic Thinking. Oops, I forgot to, I'm all discombobulated with my buttons, sorry everyone. There You're we go. fine. Okay, awesome. Thank you for your patience. Uh, so for dynamic thinking, we're going to help a teen find out that they have something to say before we ask them to write an essay. And this is, a, as Julie said at the beginning, a kind of revolutionary idea. Uh, kids so often face the blank page, right, when they're given an essay assignment and just said go and run with it. So they have no time to delve into how they figure out what they think about a topic. So we're going to take the essay element out of it and really delve into the idea of what you think and how you access the inner mind life that lives within you and get that to the page. That's a lot of what this class is about. So these are the main ideas. I'm going to jump off of the screen share, but take a screenshot if you'd like. Okay, so we're going to start off with true truth, which is a really dynamic exercise where we ask students just to think about something that they've done, like a piano performance, and they're going to free write about it, but they're not going to stop there. They're going to look at a sentence that popped out at them from that initial free write, put it at the top of a page, and then free write about that. And then they'll do that one more time. And in the process, they get a chance to dig a little bit deeper beneath the surface of, I played piano and it was fun. They get to find out a little bit about what might have been uncomfortable about that experience. What is some of the true truth that I really feel that makes this experience meaningful to me? So they're mining their experience for those deeper details. That's one way that we work on that flexible thinking piece. We also look at controversial issues, which is kind of taking the mind out to look at, you know, how do I feel about violence in video games? And can I actually look at that from different points of view? Because as I said, in these classes, that's so essential. They need to be able to look at things from different points of view to find the strengths and the weaknesses in their arguments and to shore up their own argument or maybe have their mind changed a little bit by what they learn. So we play a game in there called the Believe and doubter game where they get a practice belief of different points of view just for a moment you're going to take that opposite view and really live it inhabit it for a second what does that feel like why do you think that people who believe this actually believe it you know if we don't just assume that they're insane right <laughs> right so, yeah so they get to spend some time with that and bring those that kind of different perspective writing together in a final project called the collage if you've done kids write intermediate that experience should sound familiar, although we did change up some of the activities in it. But if you've never done it, oh my gosh, it's a dynamic, amazing experience for kids. We get feedback from them all the time that talks about how powerful this has been in showing them how to write with vivid detail, how to dig in on different sides of a question. It's just an A-plus experience for those kids who take it. So we love it. <laughs> yeah, it's my favorite thing. Let's just point that out. <laughs> um, More than chocolate? <laughs> it might be. Uh, because the development of a rhetorical imagination is the key feature of academic life. It's the capacity to hold multiple points of view simultaneously and dispassionately. I know that's a lot of big words. Basically, what we're boiling down is this. When you go into any academic field, you are called on first to get to know the field, to read all the thinkers and experts and understand and narrate back their ideas. At the point that it's time for you to make your contribution or your judgment or your comment, you have to be able to hold those viewpoints respectfully. You cannot essay rant, you need to essay write. 
These are not blog posts. These are not, you know, people who are just writing a screed online. This is a chance to be respectful of the discipline in the field and then to make a contribution. So we're helping kids identify things like their personal prejudices, their loyalties. You know, a lot of times, difficult to consider a viewpoint that your family doesn't hold. What would it mean for you to say, you know, I support the right to own guns in a family of pacifists? These are the things that we have to examine when we're looking at how to grow a mind. So that's why I love this class. I feel like it really helps to unfold what that experience ought to be in the academic life. Yeah, I've seen so many occasions too where kids will be, you know, they'll just come clean and say, I never thought about it any other way than what I've heard my whole life. And that was just what I thought was true. And it wasn't until I really started to think about it that I thought, oh, you know, there are some there's more to consider. Yeah, there's some valid points on the other side. So imagine that translating into essay writing, right? Yes. Where if you really demonstrate that you understand and sympathize and could put yourself in the shoes of your opponent, opposing you, how much stronger and more convincing that makes your own argument because you Absolutely. really are coming from a place of understanding. So Absolutely. Cool. Great job, Julian, initially writing those exercises. We <laughs> kept them all. They're all fabulous. And <laughs> uh, we put them just in a different order for the most part. Okay, so we have one more class. This one should just bring you all to your feet, cheering with, with excitement, because we're just going to solve some family problems for you right now. And here we go. This is our last class. It is the research and citation class. And so take a good screenshot of all that glorious goodness, because we are actually going to not assume that when your kids get to a place where they have to do research, that they're just going to go do it. <laughs> you know, that so often we just say, you got to do research and then come do something with that research, right? But the doing of the research, that's just an innate thing you're born with, evidently, that you just have this ability to go find information, you know, read this difficult language. It's often academic and challenging. Find the main ideas and then cite them properly into a work of some sort, right? And anyone who's had an experience like that with their child where somebody made them do a research project probably just was a little bit teary at the end. So take a screenshot of that. Okay, I'm going to take you through what this class is going to involve, but you're going to love it. So in this class, we have, we're going to start with how to search you know, which is something that so many kids don't know how to do. How do you find an interesting question and then how do you search about it? So you type in the word zoos because you're going to do something about zoos and you end up with five million, you know, it takes hours. It really is such a slog. So we actually have some lessons to teach you how to search, how to find those databases that kind of weed through some of the not credible sources and take you right into the academic world. So we've kind of gathered all of that for your student to help them find it. You know, once they've found it, they can do something with it. But as you know, the finding of it is such a challenge in internet searching. So we're going to show them how to do that. We're going to tell them how to figure out if this thing I am looking at is what we would call a credible source, because we expect them to use credible sources. And we may say, don't rely on Wikipedia, but how can we go beyond that? And it's really an investigation thing, because at this point, guys, they're not going to be perfect at it, right? They're going to look at it, and they're going to do their best, and they may choose something that may not be 100% credible. But isn't it awesome that they took a few minutes to think about it and decide and choose this because they think it's a credible source? So we're going to teach them how to differentiate between, you know, very opinionated, ranty, unsubstantiated work and something that has a little more credibility. That's going to be our job. We're going to look at that. We're going to have them pick an interesting question to look at, too, as they're going through so that they're not just doing it for the sake of it, but they're actually researching a topic that's interesting to them, which always helps. And um, after that, they're going to look at their notes and figure out how to take notes. I'm going to give them three options here because the note card option is one that a lot of people love, but we found a couple of other ones we wanted to give a spin to and see if that helped people take notes in a little better way. And then they get to learn how to not plagiarize you know that big like evil word that is we're so afraid of you know people being accused of plagiarism plagiarism is just lack of practice at citing sources it really is it's not an intentional ripoff it's just that kids don't understand when something comes from outside of them they can easily just give credit to it and still use it but it's the giving credit part 
that we're going to teach in this class. So we're going to teach them about summarizing and paraphrasing and direct quoting. And then we're going to ask them to do a short research project that just kind of pulls all that together. In four weeks, we're going to do it. We're going to get it done. It's going to be great. So they'll come out with something that they can use, but they'll come out with so much more. They have the skills that they can apply to essay writing. It's just going to be phenomenal. You guys are all going to thank me. Later. I'm I so totally <laughs> stoked about all this. I can't even tell you. I'm like getting tingles right now. <laughs> this is so up my alley because the thing of it is, you know, I teach at the college level and these students come in from Catholic schools, private schools, public schools that are reputable uh, and they don't have these skills because like I said, over and over this stuff gets handed off. There is so much quote unquote content to get through, that the actual tools to produce the assignments is not being taught. And so what happens then is they get to college and Composition 101 has to sort of do a crash course in all these things. So imagine sending your kids off to college where they actually feel resourced and prepared. Mm -hmm. They'll go in actually knowing what to do. Uh, to me, this is like top notch stuff. Oh, truly. And when they go do their first essay, you know, if they take expository essay with us or if they do help for high school or something else, it's it's going to be so much less daunting because the pulling of all that together in the actual writing of an essay, which adds an extra layer of complicated, you know, thought processing. It just, you know, it's going to make it go so much more smoothly for them. They'll have the tools that they need and then can get those extra skills on top of that that's really going to help them bring things together in a strong essay format. So it's a great progression. Some people may wonder if I've already taken kids right intermediate, what can I do? I say go for reading the essay and the research and citation because almost 100% of the material in there is new. Yep. from kids right intermediate. So they're gonna get a great foundation. They can also go straight into expository essay if they've taken kids right intermediate and they feel ready, that's fine. But if you'd like them to detour for a little bit more skill building, those are two directions that you can go. Yes, and there was an, a question about whether or not kids who haven't had much writing practice should start here. I would say yes. Mm -hmm. If you are bringing kids into the high school level and they haven't done a, a lot of writing, this is a great place to start. Starting with dynamic thinking or reading the essay are such easy entry points because we're not expecting them to produce a polished essay. They don't have to know how to write. We're actually teaching them. Yes. So you can start that high school level. The only kids that I would put in, kids uh, in the Writer's Jungle Online who are in high school, are kids who are truly remedial, kids who've really struggled with dysgraphia or dyslexia, aren't reading and writing well. But if your kids have just been neglected, and by the way, congratulations for not damaging them, neglect, right? great. Uh, <laughs> throw them right into our dynamic thinking and our reading the essay. Those are great places to start, and that will build them up. Uh, the essay reading class is four weeks. Each of these classes lasts a month. Exactly. I'm going to uh, put up a slide at the end that will show you the schedule, but we've got them running all through the spring. So you can get in, if you want to try for all three classes in the spring semester between January and June, you can certainly do that. We have availability for all of those classes. You can just choose to do one or two, obviously, as well, but it's all available for you. Four weeks each. So quick punch, in, dive deep, get out. That's what we like to do at Brave Writer. So we have a big stack of Q and A's. So what I'm gonna do is, Kirsten, I'm just gonna fire them off at you and you're gonna answer, okay? Oh, good. So the first one is, do you have grade age suggestions? Yes, we should. You, they should at least be 13 years old in order to enroll in this class. We do occasionally take a, a, an advanced 12 year old if you really feel that they are ready for that advanced processing. But it's kind of that chemical wash of puberty that makes them able to do the flexible thinking piece that I was talking about. So they'll just struggle a little less if they are at least that old. So we like 13 and up. Great. Uh, would these classes work well for children? Oh, we did that one. Minimal help. Okay. Can you please put the slide up for the first class reading the essay one more time? I can. Uh, that, that requires my share screen skills to come back into effect, so bear with okay, me. Okay. We'll do it real quick. Okay. There is my reading the essay in all its glory. Okay. Some let's, we'll do each one. So take a quick yep. screenshot of this one. That one's reading the essay. Everybody got it? Thumbs yep. up. Yep. Here Good. is dynamic thinking. And the dynamic thinking is the one that is the closest to Kids Right Intermediate. So if your kids have taken Kids Right Intermediate, they don't need to take this one. I mean, they can, but they don't need to. All right. Exactly. And then the third one. And that is our research and citation. Woohoo! So excited. <laughs> 
while I have that screen up, I'll go ahead and pop the dates. Perfect. These are the dates that we're going to run the classes. So as you can see, we're running them all throughout the semester. You'll be able to find four weeks that work for you. Try to find them around your vacations because it is a quick class. You'll want to be able to give them time to do their full attention in there. And we do not recommend a certain sequence. You can go in any order. These do not require you to go in a specific order. So work with your schedule, talk with your kids. I'm really all about kids buying in. So you want to make it possible for them to be like, oh, well, this one sounds good. I want to try that. Don't necessarily assume just because you're so reassured by research and citation that that's the first one they should take. Okay. Right. Although you'll want them to do that one first because you'll be like, somebody's going to take it over. It's going to be so fabulous. It's um, true. Yeah. Um, Lisa <laughs> is asking, can all three classes be done in one year or do you recommend breaking it up? Yes, they can. Three, four week sessions is easy to fit into the spring semester. We're going to offer these every semester. So no worries. If you don't get it this time around, you'll come back around to the fall. If you've done help for high school, which is the next question, I would recommend doing the reading the essay and the research and citation, and you don't need to do the dynamic thinking. That's right. Um, we do teach the five paragraph essay. That's the next one. Kirsten, tell us about the two essay classes that we offer. Right, so after they would finish this series, ideally, they would go into expository essay. We have two of them. The expository essay, exploratory and persuasive, is the first one they should try. That one does the five paragraph essay in two different forms, open and closed. And we have a rhetorical critique and analysis essay class that is for older students to kind of take that to the next level and do some literary analysis type writing. We also have what we call advanced composition, which is a class I created to teach textual criticism, like reading an original text like the Gettysburg Address and being able to interpret it properly. This is a very common practice in college, never taught in high school. We teach it in high school. So that's another one. And then you could culminate in the MLA research essay, which is a full-blown college course level uh, teaching of the research paper. And that you should take at the end. Yeah, uh, each, that's the big kahuna. The big kahuna. Um, how much credit is each class? So we recommend that it's, it's up to you, ideally, but we do say that these courses are each worth a quarter of a credit. We are available to offer unofficial transcripts to help you build your own homeschool transcript for these classes with grades. If you would like that, you just need to request it. Thank you. And are, is it a good idea? Let's see here. Let me read this. Are the classes simultaneous, sequential, or cumulative? Uh, they are none. They're each one on its own merit. It has its own bit of information. You will not miss anything if you start with one course and not the other. It is up to you to decide the order that you would like to do them. And they are offered throughout the year. This is our first semester offering them, but they will be a standard staple of Brave Writer with many sessions. Um, okay, let's see. Everyone's asking about the order of the classes. We've already said that. They're all four weeks. I see a side question here about hours of work, so I'll go ahead oh, and- Oh, good. Answer, answer that. That'd be great. And so these classes require about 60 to 90 minutes a week of reading and writing combined. So they'll have some assignments to read. They'll have a two to three assignments each week of writing. Most of the writing is just a couple of paragraphs. We don't really require long pieces of writing for anything that we do in essay prep. We're more about the quality than the quantity. Yes, and Wendy is saying it's daunting to pay for all three courses, so I'm wondering which one would be best to try to teach myself. I'm going to answer that. Mm -hmm. The Help for High School Manual has all the material from Kids Write Intermediate, which includes paraphrasing uh, and a little bit about this source and, and um, citation piece. So if you were to take one of the courses, I would say take the reading one, yeah. read the essay, take that class, and let Help for High School teach the others because you will get adequate support in those in Help for High School. It's right. not identical, but it's, it's definitely good. I mean, And the reading the essay has that discussion piece, which is just so valid for our teens to get a chance to interchange on those ideas. Out of all those three classes, the reading the essay is the biggest component of student-to-student -student interaction. So another great reason to take that one. Yes. Now Liz is wondering if these classes should be taken multiple times through high school. <laughs> I don't think that that's, I mean, it's going to be repeat. So, you know, why would you? That would make it a little bit painful, I think, for the kids to repeat this through. And um, it would be nice if they rotated topics and things, but this is not that kind of class. They're just going to be ready to go into expository essay after they finish these. Right. And again, just to reiterate, there's no correct sequence on the website. Everything is alphabetical. So don't 
let that tell you what order you have to go in. Go according to your own interest level and what your kids are up for. They can be taken in any order. Uh, you already answered. Did you answer how many hours outside work? Uh, I did. Yeah. 16 yeah. and 90 minutes. We do give credits and grades if you request them. Students do see other student writing. How about explaining why we consider that so valuable, Kirsten? Uh, it, you know, when you get a chance to read somebody else's work, not only does it give you ideas and spark your own thinking about what you might want to say, but it also gives you a chance to see my, as the instructor's comments, on everybody else's writing. And how much more valuable is that to get all of that information instead of just hearing about your own piece of work? A lot of our kids, too, interact over each other's writing. We have a very safe, inviting environment here where students are learn how to be supportive of each other, to talk about the writing and how it impacted them. So they get actually extra readers and extra comments by participating in our classes. That's, that's a big reason why we value it. And it also creates the sense that interaction and feedback around your own writing is normative. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, you get to read the teacher feedback on the student work that isn't your work as well. So I've built the whole program around the, re the writer workshop support group model. That's how pros grow in their writing and we've discovered that that's how students grow best as well. Uh, the final question is about cost and they're each $239, is that right? That's right, four yes. weeks, $239 each. Yep. The best money you've spent. If you've never taken a class with us before, please know that the one thing that makes us stand apart from other writing programs is the depth of teacher feedback. This is never a situation where we go, good job, strong writing, keep up the good work. It's just not how we operate. My daughter and I were just talking about this earlier today because she's taken some classes with other places and just things. She's had a lot of experience and she says, Brave Writer by far is the most commenting you'll ever see feedback wise and not only that but actually they tell you what's good about your writing too they don't just say here's the stuff you need to fix they actually take the time to tell you what's working in your writing How and is that? yeah and here's what's great our pedagogy is really around reading and writing so we don't have video we don't have you know office hours are only on thursday between one and two and that's the only time you can ask a question no it's like joining a facebook group you are in this environment with everybody else for the entire four weeks. Your students can live in any time zone, Singapore to Canada. It doesn't matter where you live. You log in when you have eaten dinner or lunch, you know, where you have good energy, you're wide awake. You read the information that helps you do the assignment. And then you pick a time in your life during your week that's good for you to do the project, the student does. When the student then gets that done, they type it into the classroom and the instructor, when she has her full attention engaged, will come and give responses. Now, here's why this is so powerful. Your students are in reading and writing mode even when they're asking a question, even when they're interacting with another student. It starts to really hook up the mind with the hand and creating and generating the vocabulary that's gonna go into all that writing. It's so powerful. And I wanted to just add, that these classes are a model of what they're going to do in college. Most colleges today have some kind of online component where students have to respond to each other's writing. They have to post responses to assignments. And so this is like practice for that experience as well. It's not just isolated to Brave Writer. It's actually built with that in mind. So you're giving them kind of um, training wheels for that college experience. Uh, somebody asked if this is allowing students to learn to develop paragraphs in their essays. The essay classes are all about that, and these classes are preparation for that experience. So yes, absolutely. Yeah, you'll find we're really focusing on using language to be powerful and impactful. What are the word choices you can make that are going to have the biggest impact on readers? And how can you formulate this paragraph in a way that's going to grab a reader's attention and make them stay with you till the end? Because we're all about how it impacts readers more than this is a classically, wonderfully constructed paragraph. If yeah. it's not interesting to read, we're going to say, hey, let's jazz this up and see if we can really grab the reader's attention with this paragraph. Yeah, the way I like to put it is we're interested in power, not just accuracy you know and not just accuracy not just getting it right how many essays in school have gotten A's that weren't even interesting to read we want our kids to be able to take these skills with them after they're done with the academic career not just oh god thank god I'm done with the essay thank god I'm done with persuasive writing you know we've got 
forums and Facebook posts to populate with good quality thinking. Can we get some of those out there? <laughs> I'm all about it. I want those New York Times commenters to be articulate. So let's get these kids ready for that world as well. Um, the last thing we want to tell you about is when you can register for these classes. Can you let us know that, Kirsten? Yes, I can. Our registration, drumroll please, opens on December 4th at noon Eastern time. So please start, mark your calendar. I imagine because some of these classes are new and popular, they will fill quickly, especially if they're earlier in the term. So if you'd like to make sure to guarantee your spot, you'll want to jump on and register on December 4th on our website. Um, can I give a final uh, five minute rundown of our classes for those who might have missed the beginning. Mm. Let's get a Please get do. Yeah, do a nice recap. And just to tell you, that's a Monday, Monday, December 4th at noon Eastern. It's like Ticketmaster for you two. Everybody just attacks their computers and they keep hitting refresh on the screen. So just know that it's, a, it's intense, but it's great. We love it. Yes, it is. We do love it. Okay, so we've got three new classes coming. They are going to replace Kids Write Intermediate. They are the essay prep classes. You can take them in any order. They last four weeks. Each class is $239, and registration opens for these classes on December 4th. The first class that we've created is called Essay Prep Reading the Essay. This is our literary analysis class using the essay. Kids get to learn what makes essay writing powerful, and they get to mimic those masters in the writing of their own activities and also engaging in student-to-student -student dialogue as they do over what makes these essays work. The next class is Essay Prep Dynamic Thinking. This is the class that is the most like our original Kids Write Intermediate class. It teaches your students to look at topics, controversial topics, and personal experience topics from deep, focused, and multi-perspective avenues. So they'll get a chance to look at the topics, they'll get a chance to write about it. The final project for that class is called the collage. It's a really fun piece of writing that I'm sure they've never done before. So it'll be pretty exciting for them. The last class is called Essay Prep Research and Citation. This is just what it says. We're going to teach your kids the skills of researching finding credible sources quickly on the internet or in person in in person re in in local research it's also going to give them the opportunity to learn how to cite expert sources in their writing to avoid plagiarism and to use those sources to back up their own arguments so those are our three classes it's the power of three we hope that you won't miss it Thank you, Kirsten, and thank you everyone for joining. I will be selecting uh, one of you from a drawing to win one free space in one of those classes, and we will send that out in an email with the replay link so that if you want to watch this again or watch it with your student, you can. Thank you, Kirsten, for designing these amazing classes. I'm so excited. I can't wait. Everybody write to me at kmerriman at bravewriter.com and let me know what you think. We want your feedback. We want to know if they're working well for you. So I hope you'll stay in touch and let us know. Yeah, I'm putting that in the chat for people if they want it. Great. Thank you so much. Have a good evening, everyone.